Hello, I'm Arlo Leach, and I'd like to show you what's new in Setlist Maker version 4.0. This is the biggest update to Setlist Maker so far, and I think the app is now more streamlined and easy to use. But if you're used to the old version, there are a few things you should know to make a smooth transition. When you run the app under iOS 7 now, you'll notice that the graphic design adopts the iOS 7 design language. One thing you might not notice is that the navigation column on the left is now resizable. You can drag and drop the grip area at the top of the column to customize your sizing. If you tap the grip area, the navigation column will close completely. You can tap again to restore it. You can also double tap to return to the default sizing. And this split view is now available if you use your device in portrait orientation too. However, just like before, there is no split view on an iPhone or iPod Touch. iOS 7 makes it easier to change the color scheme of an app, so for the first time, Setlist Maker now has a choice of a light or dark color theme. We're in the dark theme now, but I can go to Settings, Appearance, and select the light theme, then go back to Apply My Selection, and there it is. So depending on the lighting conditions at your gigs, you can use the light or dark theme. If you're really observant, you notice that the settings page I just edited didn't open in a pop-up window like it used to. For this version, I minimized the pop-up windows and placed the edit pages in the main window wherever possible. At the same time, I added an auto-save feature to all the editing pages. This is one of the bigger changes in this version, so let's see how it works when I edit some songs. First, to edit an item, I can just tap its name rather than tapping a small edit button. This makes it easy to quickly view lots of pages. If you do want to change an item, you can make the change right here in the main column, and then you can just move on to another page and your changes will be saved. I'm changing all these songs to active and you can see the changes showing up in the song list. If you need to update a lot of items, this is much quicker than the old design. The autosave runs when you view the next item or navigate back to a previous menu or leave the app. If you want to save the item without leaving it, you can tap the item name in the list. Then it will save and immediately reload with the new info. Now let's say you edit an item, but before you leave the edit page, you change your mind. As soon as you leave the page, it will be automatically saved but you can avoid this by tapping the revert button at the bottom of the page. This will revert the page to the way it was when you opened it, so when you leave the page no changes will be saved. Here's another new feature. At the top right of most pages you'll see a utility toolbar with buttons for song layouts, MIDI, device linking, and database syncing. These buttons show real-time status for some activities and provide quick access to others. For example, as I edited these songs, I saw the upload and download icons blinking each time the app performed an auto-sync. I can also sync manually by tapping the button now. If I tap the MIDI icon for this song, I see the MIDI button blink as the MIDI data is sent out. It will also blink to show incoming MIDI data, and I can tap the MIDI button to connect or disconnect from the MIDI network. The device linking button gives quick access to the screen sharing and remote control settings, so I can link devices without having to navigate back through the settings menus. If I'm linked to another device, this button will become highlighted and will include the number of linked devices, and inside this menu I'll see the names of the linked devices. The song layout button leads to a great new feature that we'll see in a moment. First, let's go back to the shows list, select a show, and tap the edit button and now I see an editable song list on the left and the show details on the right. I'll scroll down and we'll see headings for three songs in this show. Previously you could select custom set names on the show details page, but now it's easier to assign custom set names. You can just tap a heading and select a name from the list. So I'll name this the Encore set. If you want to assign a set name that you haven't defined yet, you can tap the heading then tap the plus button and add a new name and then go back and select the new name.
In addition to custom set names, you can now add custom names to pauses. You can insert pauses into your show to indicate when you're going to change instruments, talk about your merchandise, or introduce the band. Let's put a pause here toward the end of the second set, and then we'll tap the pause and select Band Intros. Now this text will appear as a reminder whenever I view the set list. Let's go back to the show view and select a song. And this looks like the perform window from previous versions. But now the song layout button in the utility toolbar is active. If I tap that, I can see four different song layouts. The default is perform, but I can also see a practice layout with an area for notes and transpose buttons, a dashboard layout with big display info about each song, and a list only layout. You can use these layouts for different kinds of rehearsals and performances, and you can even switch between them with a remote control device. The best thing about the song layouts is that this list of four is just a starting point. You can edit the layouts or add your own. I'll go over that in a separate video called Custom Song Layouts. Meanwhile, let's look at one more new feature here in the Practice Layout. You'll see the standard recording controls at the bottom of the screen, but there's now a second row of controls. The first two buttons are loop markers, so if you want to rehearse with a section of a recording, you can tap the Start and End marker and Setlist Maker will repeat that section indefinitely. I'm going to set the first loop marker at the beginning of the recording, and this recording has an intro riff that I want to repeat, so I'll start the recording, and then when I get to the end of the intro, I'll hit the second marker. And now Setlist Maker will just keep repeating that section. And the slider down here is a speed control, so you can slow down a recording to practice with it. To return to the normal speed, just double tap the slider. And to clear the markers, you can just tap those again. By the way, some of the gestures here in the song layouts are a little different than the old perform window. We still have hotspots at the top and bottom of a document to change pages. I'll zoom in on this so we can see it. There's the top hotspot and the bottom hotspot. But now the hotspots at the left and right of a document change to adjacent documents if you have multiple documents attached to a song. In this case, I have a document and also chords, and I can switch between them by tapping on the right side or the left side. To show a document full screen, you can tap the center of the document and then tap the center again to return. And to change songs, you can swipe horizontally anywhere in the song layout. If you pinch to zoom a document or lyrics, those zoom levels will be saved automatically. And if your layout includes the Notes field, you can resize the notes, and that zoom level will be saved too. Okay, those are just the major new features, but Setlist Maker 4 has lots of smaller updates as well. You can visit the Setlist Maker website and tap Release Notes for a detailed list of all the changes. Thanks for watching, and I hope these updates make Setlist Maker an even better tool for your music.